in physics, there's a concept called the conservation of energy that says that energy cannot be created or destroyed. So in this system of the atom, if the electron is losing energy, it can't just disappear. It has to go somewhere. So where does that energy go? Well, that brings us to the idea of atomic emission. So as an electron transitions from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, the atom emits a photon that has exactly the same energy as the amount the electron lost in that transition. A photon, like we discussed before, is a tiny particle of light, yet we still kind of treat it like it has a wavelength because it does. Photons, they're both particles and waves. If that disturbs you, I think this image is kind of a good one because you can see there's a wavelength kind of depicted here, but it's all kind of gathered together into one little particle. So that's our photon leaving the atom because the electron has just transitioned from its first excited state to its ground state. And when we have transitions between uh, different steps, then we have photons with different energies emitted. And the connection between the energy transition and the photon energy is given by this equation where the frequency of the photon that's emitted by an atom is equal to the energy of the transition, so the energy difference between those two levels, divided by this constant called Planck's constant, which is just a universal constant, some you know, number that was set at the beginning of the universe and has been the same ever since. All right, so this idea that the energy levels are connected to specific colors explains why we see, you know, what we see when we look at so-called neon signs or really any sign that's made of a uh, gas of one composition that's heated so it glows. So these are two examples of gas tubes filled with nitrogen, filled with helium, and that you can see they glow in very specific colors. And, uh, you know, the helium gas looking at this, it's like, well, what color is that exactly? Well, it turns out it's not made of a single color. There are actually multiple different transitions that are happening in this helium gas at once. And when we pass that light through a prism to separate it out according to its frequency, then we see an emission spectrum from that gas tube. And in this spectrum, we see discrete lines where the frequency of each line is set by the energy difference from the transition that created that photon. All right. So looking at this emission spectra of the helium gas, are the red photons or the blue photons in this spectrum higher energy? Yes, so this is review from last time. So it looks like we're on the same page that the blue photon is higher energy. And let me just come back to our picture of a spectrum of the EM spectrum, at least the visible part of it. And um, show you that the, the, you know, the higher frequency and the higher energy light corresponds to short wavelengths, whereas our long wavelength light, the red light, corresponds to low frequencies, low energy. So let me ask you one more question then about the uh, colors that can come from emission when there are transitions between different energy levels. So let's assume that we have this um, atom where the electron is starting out here in the second excited state transitioning to the ground state. And when it does so, it emits a yellow photon. Now, if it decayed from a higher energy level to the ground state, would the photon that the atom emits in that transition be red or be blue? Great, so I think that's everything. And now let me drop the link for the slides in the chat. And this slide is number 19. So if we're going from a, um, I guess this is the second excited state to the third excited state, then we're actually falling a larger um, difference in energy. Uh, and so if we have a larger energy transition, then the photon released has to be a higher energy than the original one. And the only one here that could be a higher energy than yellow would be of uh, these two choices, blue. So um, this idea that the difference in energy levels is what sets the color of photons is really critical. And uh, to kind of extend this idea, we don't always have to have our electron decaying to the ground state. So 
in this example with the yellow photon, our electron is decaying from the first excited state to the ground state. Our blue photon is decaying from the third excited state to the ground state, but we can have transitions between different energy levels too. So we could go from the third excited state to the second excited state. That would be only a tiny little drop in energy. And so the resulting photon would have to be a lower energy than either of those two examples. So if this photon is yellow from the first to the ground and we're blue from the third to the ground, then going from the third to the second could be you know, something lower energy than yellow even. So maybe red. Okay, so I wanna show you how an emission spectrum is sort of built up by these different um, transitions for the um, hydrogen atom because hydrogen is one of the most abundant, okay, the most abundant element in the universe. And so it is in our interest to understand how that atom works. And the spectrum, um, one particular set of spectral lines is called the Balmer series. That's what we're going to consider here. So in the Balmer series, the end point of all of the uh, electron transitions is going to be the first excited state. We're never going to go to the ground state with the Balmer transitions. So here are the Balmer transition lines. There's one from the second excited state to the um, first excited state. That's a red photon. We call that the hydrogen alpha line. And then there's one from the third excited state to the first excited state. That's hydrogen beta, which is a blue photon. There's another blue photon uh, above that. Well, okay, I guess kind of violet. Another UV photon above that. So there's, this isn't the only series of transitions in the hydrogen atom. There are some that go all the way to the ground state. That's called the Lyman series. And um, those photons are all higher energy. So in there in the UV part of the spectrum. So um, we're gonna come back and see hydrogen alpha pop up again and again throughout the rest of the class. Uh, it's a very important transition. So it's kind of nice to remember that there is um, a red transition in hydrogen and there's some blue violet transition as well. Okay, so this is the idea of emission and this is how any individual atom produces various colors. And of course, there's lots of atoms all with different electronic structures, all producing different spectra, right? If they are excited, if they're hot gas. Um, but there's actually an inverse process that we also need to understand in order to uh, think about stellar spectra, and that's the process of absorption. So it's basically the exact opposite of emission. And the idea that it, uh, or this should say absorption. Um, the idea with absorption is that if a photon comes in that has exactly the right energy uh, to match the spacing between two energy levels, then the atom absorbs that atom, uh, photon and the electron gets promoted from the lower energy level to the higher energy level. It has to be exactly right for this process to work. So let me ask you this question, relating emission and absorption together. If I have um, a photon that's being absorbed and a photon that's being emitted, one of them promotes my electron up from ground to first excited, and the other one is released when I fall from first excited to ground, which one of those would have the greater energy? Okay, I am seeing the most votes for C that the absorbed photon and the emitted photon related to this transition would be the same energy, and that's exactly right. So the emission process and the absorption process are exact and equal opposites.